Hi there, welcome to VA Consulting Pro. Imagine you are working in an organization where there are lots of data scientists and data analysts are working there. Now you are also getting data from different data sources and you need to combine data from these sources and you have to prepare them for further data analysis. Then in this kind of situation, either you have to do some manual work for the data transformation or you can use the automation. In this video, I'm going to let you know how you can apply automation on these data transformations and how you can combine data from the different sources. What is the technology that you can use in Microsoft Fabric for that? Well, if you would like to know more, please stay tuned with me till the end of this video and I'm going to let you know everything about it. Before we move further, if you are over here for the very first time, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel and also hit the bell icon for all the latest videos and updates from BI Consulting Pro. Now, without wasting any more time, let's get started. In this video, I'm going to talk about ingest data with Dataflows Gen 2 in Microsoft Fabric. First of all, you get to know why do we need to ingest data with Dataflows Gen 2 in Microsoft Fabric. This is not about the technology. It's simply about the scenarios that you are going to handle whenever you are working in data analytics field. Whenever anyone needs to analyze the data first, that person has to gather the data from the different sources. For example, you can get data from CSV file, you can get data from SQL Server, from Databricks or any other data sources that you can think of that can be on premises or that can be on cloud. Now, Data Flows Gen 2 is going to help you to gather data from the different sources and then you can apply the transformations over there which can be further automated so that you don't need to repeat the same process again and again on any manual intervention. You can just schedule it. You can automate your task. Dataflows Gen 2 act as an activity in data pipelines. You can orchestrate Dataflows Gen 2 in data pipeline and then you can load the data at destination. Now you must be wondering what is Microsoft Fabric Dataflows Gen 2? Well, First of all, you have to understand what is a data flow. Data flows are type of cloud-based ETL tool. That means extract, transform and load data for building and executing scalable data transformation processes. When we talk about data flows gen 2, data flows gen 2 allow you to extract data from various sources, transform it using a wide range of transformation operations and load into a destination. Using Power Query Online also allows for a visual interface to perform these tasks. And what does that mean? That simply means that anybody who even doesn't have a knowledge of coding can perform ETL operations and automate the different tasks. Fundamentally, a data flow includes all of the transformations to reduce data preparation time and then can be loaded into a new table, including a data pipeline or used as a data source by the data analyst. In real life example, we are going to consider a scenario where you need to develop a semantic model that can standardize the data and provide access to the businesses. By using Dataflows Gen 2, you can connect to the various data sources and then prep and transform the data. To allow access, you can land the data directly into your lake house or use data pipeline for the other destinations. That's what we are going to do over here in a demo. However, let's first discuss the steps that how does a data flows work. Dataflows is like a cloud-based tool for data transformation. You can pull data from the various sources that can be these separate data sources. And there is a visual interface as well. As I mentioned, you really don't need a coding skills. If you want to use SQL, you can use that over there. Once your data is ready, you can put into a new table and use it in other data processes or have data analysts use it directly. If we talk about the benefits of Dataflows, there are numerous benefits over there. It's going to help you to make data consistent, helps non-expert access specific data easily, speed up the process by reusing the data, simplifies complex data sources for, for analysts, make sure data is clean and high quality, and also make data integration easy with simple interface. Anyone who has a bit of knowledge of computer and the tools, then they can do this data transformation very easily. Now, there are certain limitations as well. Well, do not consider it as your data warehouse, first of all. It's going to require a premium workspace whenever you are going to work on it. It doesn't support detailed security at the data row level. And it's not a replacement of your full-fledged database or data warehouse. So please keep these things in your mind whenever you are working with data flows. 
Now we are going to have a demo where we are going to transform the data and we are going to load it into our destination. So let me head over to my Power BI service portal. From there, we will use SNPs data engineering where we are going to create data flow. As soon as you land on app.powerbi.com over there, you are going to get your homepage. You have to come on left hand side bottom corner. There you have to change your experience to SNPs data engineering. Once you do that, you can also select the workspace where you would like to do this kind of work or basically where you won't like to create your data flow. When you are into a new workspace, then you can start working on. So we are going to create a new workspace over here and I'm going to give it a name data flows gen 2. You can give it any name. Please don't mind that. And you can also select the different options over here, which I'm not going to do that because I have done it already a lot of time. You just need to remember that it should be on fabric capacity. And that's what we are going to use over here. So we are using here our trial version. I still have 60 days and I can simply apply it. Now, once it's going to create it, we are going to create a lake house over there. So let me come here and I'm going to create a new lake house here. And I'm going to give it again a name demo underscore data flows gen 2. And then simply hit on this create button. It would take a couple of seconds. So please don't worry about that. Once you're over here, you will find a couple of options that either you can upload the data directly over here. You can use the new data flow gen 2. You can create a pipeline, notebook, new shortcut and start with some simple data. What we are going to do over here, we are going to use this new data flows gen 2, which is going to help you to prep, clean, transform and ingest the data. Ingest the data means you can ingest it anywhere into your destination. Over here, our destination is going to be our lake house. So let me click over here. We are going to import the data from a text slash CSV file. For that, I'm going to use a link provided by Microsoft and I'm also going to provide you the link of this PPT as well as the link of the documentation in the description section. So please don't forget to check it out. You can also practice the same. It's very straightforward steps, but I'm going to let you know what questions can be asked over there. For example, when you are appearing for DP600 exam, there can be a question that what are the different default options that you can see when you create a lake house? Like we have seen that you can upload the data, you can use Dataflow Gen 2, pipelines, notebooks, and also you can explore some sample data over there. Please pay attention to individual steps. Also, you have to pay attention when I'm gonna use a link to upload the data in a data flows gen 2, that how we can do that, what are the different operations there, what is the connection there, what is the data, data gateway there, what are the different authentication methods are over there. You should pay attention to individual. If you are not gonna practice it, I'm sure you cannot do this in your exam. In your exam, you don't need to do this kind of demo, but whenever you are in your exam, there would be a multiple choice questions where you have to select different answers for them. So please do practice. Only then you can get to know that how to work with it. All right, now I have renamed it to Dataflows Gen 2 underscore demo, as you can see that, and we are gonna get the data from an Excel or let's say CSV file over here. So click on this. Now you have to pay attention over here. There are gonna be two different options to get your data. One is link to file another is upload file which is in preview you need to really pay attention because these are the questions that in your exam you can face so we are going to use one url which is over here now you see the connection the connection has been created over there once you see that you have to also pay attention to the data gateway or authentication kind but here you see this none of them is appearing but you can scroll it and if you would like to create a new connection you can create it over here but we are gonna leave it as it is now authentication kind is anonymous over here but if you would like to add it you can do that and then you can also see for your data gateway so these are a couple of options that you're gonna get to know and now we are gonna keep it to anonymous only and we are gonna click on this next button now this is gonna show you the preview of the data that is inside the file where we are going to create a data source connection. Now you see that there is an exception occurred, data source not found, Excel workbook, this, 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 the 64 bit version of Access Database Engine OLDB provider may be required to read the file. To download the client software, visit this site. I'm not sure why it's coming because it's an online version and it doesn't work like that. So we have to refresh it and then we will try it again. So let's go back. And here we are going to select CSV, click over here. Now we are going to provide this file link over here. Now I'm not going to edit the connection over here. I'm simply going to click next. And hopefully this time it's going to work. 
because you don't need to install any of the software when you are working online or on Power BI services or let's say fabric over here but still you can see that app.powerbi.com is over there you can see it over here if you would like to change anything for example delimiter or maybe the unicode over here you can do that over here you can also select that how would you like to see the preview you want to see the data type detection based on the 200 rows or entire data set or you don't want to select it because over here you see all the data types have been detected so you have to pay attention over here basically data type is very important now if you would like to add any column over here or table you can add using the example over here i believe you have already learned your lessons during the power query tutorial if you don't know then i'm going to provide you power query tutorial link in the description section however if you need one-on-one -on -one training program please do connect with us we are going to provide you that as well what we are going to do over here we are going to create a new column and that we are going to call the custom column over here so click on this create because it's going to create a data source over here and now we are into this interface as i mentioned previously if you would like to use just this interface you can use it and you can do all the different transformations over here however if you would like to use some language as well you can use it but we are not going to go there so you see your table name is over here and all other information is there so we are going to add a new column come to this add a new column and here you have to click on this custom column once you do that you can also give it a name for example i'm going to call it month number and then i'm going to select its data type as a whole number please don't forget to select the data type and in order to get it you have to write one m function or there or m formula let's say so we are going to type date dot month that is going to give you the month number and you have to select your column name which is going to be your order date so let's find our order date which is over here and that's all you need to do and we are gonna click on this ok button and now you can see that your month number column has been populated with the right data type over here now we are gonna go further and we are gonna select ok and then we are gonna publish this one so so far we have just created one custom column but if you would like to create any other transformation you can choose out of these and then you can create any of the different transformations as i mentioned i'm not going to do this because it's a power query tutorial completely and we are not going to go into this one so what we are going to do we are going to simply add data des uh, data destination for data flow for that what you have to do if you would like to add the data destination you have to come over here and then you have to add a data destination where you would like to add this data which is not going to come here so first you have to click this button publish now you can also do the publish later so click on publish now and here you can see that no data destination was there because we have already selected this destination is going to be under this one which is our lake house so you have to do it do it over here only so we are going to go again in that and then we are going to select it now it's refreshing the data but let's go again into this one and edit it this is not appearing because the data is being refreshed over here but you can find the different options over there you would like to export into .json file you want to see the refresh history etc these are similar options that were available previously in the data flows now if i'll go under this one let's see our data flows gen 2 is appearing over here or not there's nothing because it has not been added over here so we can also change it to SQL analytics endpoint if you would like to if you want to create it but we are going to keep it to lake house only let me go back to my workspace and this has been refreshed so I'm going to edit it so here you can see that no data destination has been added if you will come over here on right hand side at the bottom corner it's been not added so you can edit destination over here and there are different destinations basically where you would like to add your data after the etl or the transformation of the data you can add into azure data explorer you can add into lake house or azure sql database or a warehouse but we are going to do it on lake house once you are over here it's going to ask you the name of the lake house and we have created one so we are going to select simply lake house then you have to click next authentication please remember i'm using my organization account and here i have my different lake houses over there so we are gonna do this in lake house gen 2 which is over here data flows gen 2 and this is our demo one because this is your workspace first then where you would like to add it so that's what you have to select and you have to also give it a table name which we are going to use the same which is orders now 
So you can click next after selecting that. Here you have to also check if you would like to change any of the data source type, etc. Then I'm gonna simply select save settings. There is automatic automatic setting as well, but if you would like to switch it off, then you can do it yourself as well. And you would get to know that how it is being updated over here. Now I'm gonna do automatic save settings. And then I can simply publish it. Now, once you have done that, you can also add into a pipeline. And why into a pipeline? A pipeline is basically an orchestration. A data pipeline is basically an orchestration of different data activities. For example, you can add notebook, you can add your data flows gen2, you can add any other transformation that you would, any other activity that you would like to add it over there. So I'm not gonna cover data pipeline in this one, but I'm gonna cover the data pipeline in the next module. So you have to stay tuned for that. In the next one, we are gonna use this data flows gen2 into a pipeline. And I'm gonna show you how you can do that. This is it for this video where we have learned what is a data flows gen2, what is the difference between a data flows and data flows gen2, why we are using them, how you can use them, and how you can create a data flows gen2 in Microsoft Fabric inside a lake house. I hope you really enjoyed this video and now you have all the information about data flows gen2 when, where, and how to use them. If you have any question and concern regarding data flows gen2, please don't forget to let us know in the comment section. Also, if you're looking for any Power BI training program or any consulting services for Microsoft Power BI and Microsoft Fabric, please do let us know in the comment section. Till next time, keep learning and I'm gonna see you in the next video.